Shalom, Christopher Enoch here. He who is without sin cast the first stone. You know, I'm sure most of us have heard that phrase before. And quite honestly, the ones who use that, the ones who use that the most are sinners who try to defend their sin, try to protect their sin. If they're Christians, if they claim them to be Christians, they shouldn't be protecting or defending their sins. They should be confessing their sins and asking for prayer. But instead, they would say, Oh, don't tell me about my sin. He was without sin. Cast the first stone. The passage they're referring to, actually, is the passage of the woman caught in the act of adultery. It's found in the first part of John chapter 8. The story goes that there was a woman who was caught in the act of adultery. And they brought her to Jesus. And they said, look it, the scriptures say this woman should be stoned. And they were, they were basically just testing Jesus to see what he would do if he would actually obey the scripture. And you know, they said basically the scripture says that this woman should be stoned. And Jesus replied, well, he who is without sin cast the first stone. And, and so people love that passage. They love that passage. But there's two main things. There's two things you should know about this passage. There's two things you should know. Number one is that passage is not found in the oldest manuscripts. That's right. That passage is not found in the oldest manuscripts. Even the oldest Bible that we have today, the oldest Bible known to man, as of the recording of this video, is the Codex Sinaiticus, dated to the 3rd, 4th century. That Bible has the book of John in it, but it does not have that passage in it. So, you have to think about it now. Why is it that the oldest Bible doesn't have that passage in it? Why is it that the oldest manuscripts do not have that, they, they do not have that passage in it? Now, so according to the scholars, according to, you know, the facts that we got before us, for the, for the first, for hundreds of years, the book of John was, was printed and published without that story in it, and it was added later, hundreds of years later. So, if that's true, which it seems it is true, uh, then we got to look at two other things. We got to look at the fact that it was added by someone who was not an eyewitness, obviously, we're, uh, living hundreds of years later. Number two, it was added under the name of John. It was basically forged in the name of John, as if John actually wrote it. Very uh, important things to consider now. Uh, now, does that mean the story is, does that absolutely mean, you know, conclusively that the story is false? Not necessarily. It could have been a story that was passed down from generation to generation for hundreds of years. But the, the accuracy of the story, I mean, is, is in question here, if not the entire story itself, Okay. So that's something that should be uh, considered. Now, I know some of you might be saying, well, why is it in the, why is it in the Bible then? Well, you know, you know, one of the most popular uh, Bible translations, and actually some of the most popular tra Bible translations, have that story in it. And uh, a lot of the Bible translations have a footnote in the bottom, especially the newer translations. Have, they have a footnote in the, in the bottom saying, this is not found in the oldest manuscripts. But some of the Bibles that came, you know, from the 1600s, 1700s, 1800s, even the first part of the 1900s, does not have that footnote in it. Why is it not footnoted that this is not found in the oldest manuscripts? Well, you know, I, uh, I understand that it's because that we basically didn't know, uh, we, didn't, we didn't really find all of the manuscripts, we didn't find so many manuscripts back then. Back then there was only so many manuscripts that were available. And as time went on, we found more and more and more and more and more. And finally, we're finding, well, hey, we're finding older ones. We're finding older ones. And we're finding, you know, so like we're seeing that these oldest manuscripts are, you know, do not have this story in it. So, uh, very significant point. So the possibility here is very high that this story is either inaccurate or n untrue altogether. I mean, look at this. Look at the facts here we got. A, a story that's forged forged in the name of John. Should you stake your soul on it? Should you stake your faith on that story? You decide. Number two, this is the second point you should know about that whole entire passage. Most people who quote that passage leave out 
the most important verse, uh, the most important verse of all. And that is the last words of Jesus to that woman. Jesus said to the woman, the last thing he said to that woman, caught in adultery in that story. Now, even if that story were true, even if it were true, let's say it's true, completely true, accurate, true, everything, okay? Okay, let's say that's the truth. The last words that Jesus said to that woman were, go and sin no more. Go and sin no more. Now, a lot of you believe, or a lot of people believe, that it's impossible not to sin. If that's true, then what Jesus was doing was he was barking out commands that was impossible to actually obey, which actually would make him like a tyrant, wouldn't it? Wouldn't it make him like a, a that would be abuse. If you were to, you know, be a command a, a woman who came to you basically for mercy, command her to do something that she absolutely could not do and you knew it was impossible for her to do, that's basically abuse, isn't it? If a person in authority commanded you to do something that is impossible to do, that's abuse. Now, if it's impossible to go and sin no more, if, if it's impossible to live a life without sin, then Jesus is an abuser. He's a tyrant. But I'm here to tell you that it is possible. It is possible to live a life without sin. Jesus is true and right, and he's not a tyrant or an abuser. He commands people, he commanded that woman, go and sin no more. You know, he commanded another man in another passage, sin no more, lest the worst thing come upon you after he was healed. Okay, Jesus commanded, go and sin no more. It is possible to live a life without sin. Now, this is what a lot of people don't realize. Because the people who say, oh, he was without sin, cast the first stone. You know, they're just trying to defend their sin. And, and, and if you look at the passage in context where you see that Jesus actually said to the woman after that, go and sin no more, that just... That just pulls the rug right out, on, right out from underneath the feet of these people that, like, that love that passage. So, two things you need to remember about this passage. Number one is that it's not found in the oldest manuscripts, which seriously, seriously puts a, puts a very serious question into its credibility. And number two is, even if it were accurate, 100% true, Jesus commanded, go and sin no more. So to all you who love to quote that verse, he who is without sin cast the first stone, I say to you, go and sin no more.